Tish and welcome back to my channel Auto Social UK. Now in today's video I'm going to be doing my two month ownership review of my Abarth 595 Comp. Now I say my but that's not strictly true. Now I actually leased this car via a company called Sogo and Sogo are slightly different from your standard leasing company. Let me explain why. Sogo, unlike other leasing companies, make short-term leasing possible. There's no upfront payment and they run month-by-month -month contracts. A thousand miles a month, servicing, breakdown cover and taxes all included. The only other thing you'll need is insurance. They have a wide range of cars and commercials on both personal and business plans. Sogo is perfect for someone wanting to try a car before they fully commit to a long-term plan. Or it could be to fill a gap when you're waiting on your new car. Or just like me, you like to change your car regularly. I've had a SoGo plan for nearly five months now and I've had an extremely positive experience and recommend them highly. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking a closer look at the Abarth 595 Comp and finding out just how I've got on with it in the last two months. So if that sounds good, then please make sure you keep watching. And if you like new car reviews, then please make sure you subscribe to the channel. So those of you that have watched the channel for a little while will know that before I had the Abarth 595 Comp, I actually had the Abarth 595 Turismo Convertible. And whilst I loved that car, I just wasn't in love with that car. It wasn't a car that I could see myself owning. I just found that it had too many compromises that just didn't make it worth it. There was a lot better cars on the market. However, this thing <laughs> has just, oh, I've fallen in love with this car so much. There's no kind of dancing around saying that. I have fallen in love with this car and I would purchase an Abarth 595 Comp. So what exactly is the difference? Because there isn't a huge amount of difference between this and the Turismo. So the Turismo kind of sits in the middle of the range with around 165 brake horsepower. The Comp has 180 brake horsepower. Some upgrades like Brembo brakes and you've also got the record Monza exhaust, which is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I can't wait to show you guys that later. I know you're going to love it. But there's just something about this car as a full package that works really well for me. And also, I have to note that one of the reasons I think I've got on with this car so well is because I've not driven this one as much. I've done a road trip in it, which was really good fun. My back was in bits by the end of it. I actually drove the Lupo GTI just to recover from the Abarth 595. But I think it was that kind of memories that I created in it that solidified how much love I have for this car. And that was the thing, because when I had the Abarth 595 Turismo, I was doing a lot of driving. I drove it almost every day to and from work. I drove it down to Bristol. I also think I drove it to Milton Keynes a couple of times. And that was just too much for one of these cars. They are a harsh ride and they do go through quite a lot of petrol. So when you're driving them that often, they start to grate on you. This car has been much better. I've had a lot of loans this past couple of months. So it means that I've only really driven this car a couple of times a week on short journeys. And that kind of amount of time spent with this car is brilliant. You get in it, you put it in sport mode, you hear that exhaust and you can really appreciate it. When you drive these cars too often, they do start to feel like it's a massive compromise from something a lot more comfortable. So my advice would be if you are considering having a a Bath 595, then it would be if you're doing short journeys, maybe around kind of 15 miles a day. I wouldn't want to be doing too much more in this car. I'm really quickly going to run over styling because I did go through styling in my reveal video of this car, but let's just talk about it a little bit more. The colour, absolutely amazing. This is finished in adrenaline green. And if I was going to have one of these cars, I think this is the only one that I'd go for. It looks fantastic also got these really great diamond cut wheels. These have now actually changed on the 2021 version. You get a slightly different alloy, which I'll insert, but these look really good in this contrasting color. You have got the larger Brembo brakes that you get on the comp. Um, it would be great if those were slightly a brighter color, maybe if they matched in with the paintwork or even in a yellow, I think would look quite good. They do just kind of get a little bit lost. It's a little bit lower, that it's the comp, but I haven't really found any issues with it being too low. You've got some really nice decals that run along the side of the car. This car actually looks brilliant with some stickers on. 
So when we went on the True Rally event, which I'll enter some clips, I had some kind of True Rally kind of decals on this car and it looked fantastic. It really suited it. And I think if I was going to keep this car, then I would get the Scorpion. I'll see if I can insert some photos, but you can get the kind of Scorpion decals on the side. And I think that would look really good, especially with the contrasting roof. Around the back, I love the view of this car. I think it makes it just look so pint-sized, like a little pocket rocket. I really love it. You've got a slightly bigger spoiler. I'm pretty sure it's slightly bigger on the comp. Really nice size, continued gloss black from the roof. You've also got this slightly, again, rougher kind of black material used on the uh, boot lid. Inside this boot, it's not massive amount of storage, but to me, I'd gotten used to the storage that I got in the convertible. So anything is an upgrade from that. You've got this really pointless, tiny little, like really, what is the point in that? You might as well just not have one. Um, but actually I found it to be quite usable, the space in here. You have got quite a big lip. So if you are kind of hoiking out suitcases, it can be a little bit difficult, but I can put everything in there, a weekly shop, going away for the weekend. I really haven't found it any trouble at all. You've got these hollowed out lights on the 2021 version, which I think was an upgrade around 2018, 2019. You've also again got the rear split out along the back and that houses this record Monza exhaust. This sounds great, but it also looks great as well. In a time where we're losing our physical tailpipes and they're all getting hidden underneath, the Abafs is still so visible and I love that about it. reason why I've fallen in love with this car so much and that is this record Monza exhaust it really is fantastic it sounds amazing very rarely nowadays does a stock exhaust sound this good it is seriously so much fun and as someone that's not always been used to performance cars it's actually really good fun kind of working out how to get that sound out of it it does take you a little while to work out when exactly to downshift and when to upshift to make sure that you get that really great sound out of it and you know something else i absolutely love about this exhaust as well it isn't just when you're driving at kind of those 30, 40 speeds and going through the first, second and third really, really quickly. It actually makes a pretty decent sound on a dual carriageway as well. When you're sitting at around 60, even if you just lift off of the throttle like that now, ready? You get that amazing sound. And that means that even when you're at high speeds, this car is just so much fun. There is quite a large amount of difference between normal mode and sport mode. One of my party tricks, if anyone's ever driving this car, is to say to them, kind of accelerate and then see if you can press the sport button whilst you're accelerating. Because the quick uplift that you get in power and sound is really impressive. See, the reason I think that I've fallen in love with the competition so much more than I did when I had the Turismo is because this car just has the full performance package. It's got slightly more brake horsepower. It's got a slightly noisier exhaust. And that means that living without things like heated seats and a comfortable ride mean that this car makes those compromises worth it. I think that the Turismo was just lacking slightly in the fact that it made me miss home comforts, but this car makes me forget about them all. I would take a noisy exhaust over a set of heated seats any day. 
so I might be raving about this car a lot more than I did when I had the Turismo but that doesn't mean that it isn't without its negatives and it's still got to be that seat in position and how comfortable it is because now these say belt seats are a lot better than the ones that I had in the Turismo and they're a lot better for when you're cornering because they do hold you in but they're still by no means comfortable at all. They are really hard and this is a really rough ride, especially when you're in sport, you feel everything firm up quite well. It's really, really obvious. And that means that if you're on a long journey, it is a rough ride. Something that's really good in the Abarth is visibility. Thanks to the fact that it's really dinky in size, you can pretty much see the whole of the car from this position. You've got a really nice view out of the front windscreen, probably thanks to the fact that you sit so high. I guess that's the one advantage of sitting high. But you've got really good view out of the sides. I can see the whole back of the car. And in fact, even though that's quite a small rear view, um, rear view mirror, rear, rear view mirror, get your words out, Tish. Even though that's quite a small rear, what am I trying to say? Even though that's quite a small rear window, blimey we got there, I can still see out of it really well. So fuel consumption is a bit of a weird one. Just like the Turismo, I feel like this car goes through quite a lot of fuel. But actually on the trip computer, it says that over just over a thousand miles with the average speed of 31 miles per gallon, that this car is sitting at an average of 41.5 miles per gallon, which is pretty impressive. And I feel like a little bit unbelievable. However, that may be down to the fact that this has a really small fuel tank. It only holds around 350 miles, depending on how you're driving. And that means that it feels like you're in the fuel station a lot, which I guess makes you feel like you're going through more fuel. But to be honest, when I do 20 miles each way a day, I kind of feel like I'm filling it up at least twice a week which seems a lot to me. I would say that it's sitting at more like 30 miles per gallon, but I'm not too sure. My main advice to somebody who's looking to buy the Bath 595 Comp is that there is always going to be compromises. Other cars are more comfortable. Other cars have better entertainment. Other cars have better safety features. However, nothing is quite as fun as an Abarth 595 and nothing sounds quite as good. But if you are gonna go for one of these cars, then just go for the Comp because it is the top spec car and it makes all of those compromises a little bit more bearable. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Monzo exhaust can kind of make you forget about almost everything in your life. But I don't know, what do you guys think of the Comp? I know a lot of you love it because I chat to a lot of you about it over on Instagram. And if you guys don't already follow me, then please do because I'm always posting about my different cars that I've got on loan and I love having conversations over there. If you have enjoyed this video today, please go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up. And if you wanna see more car content, then hit the subscribe button. But I don't know. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna have with the Abarth 595 Comp. I'm finding it really difficult to say goodbye, but I am eventually gonna to have to say goodbye because that's never the reason that people have cars from Sogo. They're only supposed to be short term. So we may have to wave goodbye soon. What do you guys think I should go for? Why don't you hop over to the SoGo website, have a little look and let me know what you think I should go for next. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.